Hi everyone, this is County Historian Larry Tippin. We've been doing a series that we call Tiny Towns and Vanished Villages of Putnam County. In this session, we're going to talk about the Clinton Falls area, also known as Mill Alma, had former names of Boonville and Quincy. We're going to be looking at maps and newspaper articles and so forth. If you'd like to pause and read some of those, you can just click this button at the bottom. Or if I get too far ahead of you and you want to go back, you can left click and drag with your mouse, this little red button and go back to a previous slide. Some of this information was taken from an article or speech apparently given by Hubert Klaufelder, the Historical Society, 1998. Hubert Klaufelder was a well-known historian in the Clinton Township area and Russell Township area passed away not too many years ago. Malcolm Romine, not too long ago, issued a book on Clinton Falls. It's a very, very nice publication, available for sale at the Putnam County Museum gift shop. And also 1864 map of Putnam County, 1879 atlas, the 1910 history of the county, and so forth, so on, various other sources. This is the 1864 map of Putnam County, available online for free, courtesy of the Library of Congress. And it shows in 1864, no Clinton Falls. I, I typed that in, in blue. See Dunkard Church right here. And then upstream, up Little Walnut, you see Alma with a collection of quite a few homes. And then I added, this is the location of Edna Collins Bridge. I recently had written a note about Eddie Collins Bridge, where I've solved the mystery of what happened, not at the bridge, but nearby, which you can read on my Putnam, Indiana Historian Facebook page or the blog page at the Putnam County Museum's website. The area was apparently first called Boonville. I'll explain what happened about that. Collingwood Clark Grubb came there about 1838, 1839. He went mostly by CC. Born 1810 in Pennsylvania, his parents were Joseph and Sarah Tolly Grubb. Both families were prominent earliers of the country, very prominent families. The Grubb family owned agricultural and mining lands in Delaware River Valley in Delaware County, Pennsylvania. Family first came to America when John Grubb immigrated from Cornwall, England to Pennsylvania in 1679. That's very, very early. His son, Emmanuel Grubb, who was born in 1682, is believed to be the first male child born of English parents in the new colony of Pennsylvania. Emmanuel and other son, John II, settled in Brandywine Hundred in what became known as Grubb's Landing, a very prominent area in Pennsylvania. The Grubb family was well connected, maintaining personal and marriage ties to other prominent families of the area, the early colonies. And during the 17th, 18th centuries, they embraced the religion of the Society of Friends. And when the American Revolution broke out, John Grubb II's grandson, Isaac, refused to fight on account of his religious views and paid a substitute to take his place, which is common. But Collingwood Grubb's grandfather, Amor Augustus Grubb, did enlist in the Revolutionary War, Delaware Regiment, as did his great grandfather, William Tolley. And also, though, both of those, by the way, I found the Sons of American Revolution documentation on both of those. Very interesting stories. And then in 1838, Collingwood C. Grubb married Sophia Charlotte Webb in Shelby County, Kentucky. Sophia was a daughter of Richard and Nancy Nugent. If you're anywhere from that area, you recognize all these names, of course. They were buried at the Webb Family Cemetery, which is about a mile and a half northeast of Alma, or northwest of what we now call Clinton Falls. And many of the Nugents are buried in a family cemetery bearing that name just a little over a mile northwest of Alma. 
Then in 1838 or 1839, the Webb family migrated from Shelby County, Kentucky to Putnam County, and Collingwood's Grub came with them, where he built Grub's Mill at Alma. Collingwood Grub and his wife Sophia lived in Putnam County for 19 years and had eight children. But then in 1858, the family moved to Brown County, Kansas. He is remembered for his knowledge of apples and in 1874 won an award for display of 51 different kinds of apples. Grubb then was believed to be a station master on the Pony Express and Overland Stage. An ardent abolitionist, was, he was said to be a friend, a close friend, of John Brown. It's a photo of Collingwood C. Grubb, very interesting photo. And then at Grubbs Mill, we had a sawmill at a post office from 1850 to 1858, where he was the first postmaster, and then followed by several others. But then the post office was renamed from Grubbs Mill to Alma in 1858. And then the post office continued to 1860, where it ended at Alma, the Alma post office. When the name of Alma was selected, it was not only a name change, but apparently a move for expansion. It moved on a formal basis to now what's included is downtown Clinton Falls near the falls with the appointment of Dr. Dilley as postmaster, which created quite a stir. Dr. Dilley lived directly west of the falls, has spot in personal history in 1879 Atlas, was quoted as saying that Dr. Dilley was one of the first originators of the Union Pacific Railroad. Surveyed and opened some 250 Indian mounds, discovering many artifacts, and all this occurred before he came to Clinton Township. There's a mystery why he settled here. He purchased land downstream from Boonville, what was noted, 1879 Atlas. So Boonville was apparently a, a, a group of, of cabins or homes for the workers at Grubbs Mill, located just south near Edna Collins Cover Bridge. That was the name Boonville, the first name associated with the community. Those who lived near Grubbs Sawmill, Roma, thought the postmaster should come from the area. Others thought Dr. Dilley was uppity, a late arrival to the community, and that he was too outspoken and drank too much. People who lived down the creek or near the falls and south of the falls were strongly in favor of Dr. Dilley. There are apparently several verbal and some physical exchanges about this controversy until Dr. Dilley resigned as postmaster two months later. Then the Alma postmaster position went, from, went to Henry Blood in 1858. Then the split over the postmaster job and moving the postmaster, post office from the former Alma closer to the falls created quite a controversy caused the eastern part of the settlement to create another village called Quincy, near the north edge of what we now call Clinton Falls, near the falls. Then the Alma Post Office was discontinued in 1860. The 1864 map of Putnam County that we recently looked at shows the town of Alma, but no Clinton Falls and no Quincy. There's no post office in the area until about 1874, so after the Civil War and the Reconstruction, there was a need for um, a post office, and apparently the controversy between those two communities and the contention kind of died down a little bit. And then also businesses were moving from Alma down the stream to where near the falls of the unrecognized Quincy. The tannery closed, the sawmill, blacksmith shop, had all moved. It was said that Dr. Dale used his influence in 1874, along with others, to obtain a new post office for Quincy. That request was granted, but since there was a court of Quincy in Owen County, the postmaster general said, you need to find a new name. We can't use the name Quincy for your post office. Folklore indicates that a traveling salesman suggested the name of Clinton Falls, partly because it was Clinton Township and for the nearby falls. Then Dr. Dillard was appointed postmaster then in 1874 and ran the post office 
From his doctor's office, usually a post office is run from a more public place like a general store or trading post and so forth. His office then is located west of the creek, about even with the falls. And here's a list of the postmasters at Clinton Falls. If you'd like to pause and read them all, you can. The post office then ran from 1874 to 1901, where it was discontinued about the time the rural free delivery service started. So instead of having to go to the post office to get your mail, your mail was delivered right to your box. And then as noted, most generally the postmaster appointees ran the post office from a public place of business. However, when Bill Boswell was appointed postmaster in 1877, he ran it out of his house. And his house was not easily accessible. You had to go down several lanes to get to the house. A lot of people were upset because Bill Boswell delivered the mail to the residents and businesses in Quincy near the falls, but refused to deliver to the residents in Old Alma to the northwest of that. Complaints were raised about this discrimination. The post authorities said that response was a bill to not have to deliver an email at all. So this went on for two years until another postmaster was selected. Let's talk about the mills. Abner Goodwin apparently built the first one in 1825 near the Little Walnut Baptist Church a few miles northwest of Clinton Falls along Little Walnut across from the church. The church was no longer there but the Little Walnut Cemetery. Then the Goodwin Mill interestingly housed the first school in Clinton Township. You can read about that, the 1879 Atlas, an historical document of Putnam County, where Captain Thornburg, a recent rival from Virginia, used the space when the mill was not running during dry weather for school. The mill could only run when the water was running, and Little Walnut didn't carry a lot of water, so it was dry quite often. So the millstones then were moved by Ab Sigler to his farm or his place about 500 feet east of what's now the Clinton Falls Church, and I think just a little bit south. Talk about the church, organized as a German Baptist or Duncan Church in 1862 on what had been part of the Sigler farm. I hope I'm pronouncing that right. And then had cemetery across the road from it, the old part, Vane Cemetery which is farther west, the western part of the cemetery, had been called Sigler, because it was part of the Sigler farm, or Dunker, after the Dunker Church. This is the deed book, or the deed, deed book 37, page 84, where several people are giving land, commencing at the northeast corner of the Sigler Cemetery, which apparently were the first um, and Denture created what we now call the Clinton Falls Cemetery. That's kind of, they called it the Sigler Cemetery. If you want to pause and read it, you can. And then this is the second page. We can also pause and read if you'd like. In 1893, we see an article in the Green Council of Democrat, Clinton Falls. And you can read about the people of Clinton Falls and what happened that week if you'd like. But what's significant here to what we're talking about said the party to enlarge the Dunkard Cemetery will incorporate under the name the Clinton Falls Cemetery Company, which is what it's called today. That was in 1893. Here's another deed, 1921, where apparently this was the enlargement of the Clinton Falls Cemetery by the Thomas family. If you'd like to read that, you can. A note to the Clinton Falls Cemetery Company. And then here in the 1974 Banner Graphic, where Robert Ernest Boswell said he's researched his family, noted a Boswell Family Cemetery, which is about back section of the now present Clinton Falls Cemetery. Apparently, Boswells were buried in what was called the Sigler Farm or the Dunkard Cemetery, which was west in the original part of the Clinton Falls Cemetery. Let's talk about the distillery. 
There's a cell in Clinton Falls, started by Dr. Daly and Long Cook's father. For historical records, did not name Long Cook's father. Then Long Cook later ran it. Then the foundation of the basement walls was still standing. I'll show you a photo of it if you've not seen it. The spring water then was used, making the whiskey. This distillery became a prominent business, shipped and sold to saloons, Green Council of Bainbridge, and others close by. Then the laws were changed in such that if you wanted to run a distillery, you had to put a, a, a question on the ballot for your local citizens, whether they would vote yes or no. If they voted no, you would not, you basically lost your liquor license, what it really amounted to. So in 1903, he asked for license to sell liquor by the drink which was denied by the voters. He tried again in 1904, then 1906. He gave up, quit selling the whiskey because of that law. But he had a warehouse full of corn whiskey, but no place to market it. So he shut down the distillery, and then in the opera house, it, it various sources said he built the opera house. I'm not sure if that's true, but in the ground floor of the opera house, the back door, he sold his uh, whiskey by prescription at the back door. This is a photo of the foundation, the lower part of the distillery still standing, just below the falls. Duke Miller, whose brother Kenneth Miller was principal at Rochdale, then later North Putnam Schools. The family was from Clinton Falls, and Duke took Holly Cook and I around and told us about Clinton Falls. We take many pictures. Duke said this was where his dad's store was. This little thing. This is where the blacksmith's forge was, kind of halfway between Clinton Falls and Alma, or the Edna Collins Bridge. Close up of that, blacksmith's forge. There's the steps to the well house. Apparently this is where the community well was, just a little bit uh, north of the Blacksmith's Forge on the north side, or a little bit, I guess, west, on the north side of the road. And this is uh, in, an inscription at a stone where the Clinton Center High School had been, north of Clinton Falls. It was a very prominent school, brick building, no longer there. I believe the bricks were used to build a brick house the Sands' current location. This photo of the falls, there are other photos, different directions. This is just one that we took that day. And then doing my research, I came across this. This is a German newspaper called the Indiana Tribune. I don't pretend to know German, but I picked up a few words. That Green Castle, October 24th, the Clinton Falls murder of former James Crawford, and then the rest of it, of course, I have no idea what it says. So that caught my idea, or caught my eye. So then I thought I'd look a little bit more, did more research. I found this article in the banner of October of 1830, 1883, excuse me. You can read the whole thing if you want, kind of the abbreviated version. That Tuesday night about eight o'clock, a James Crawford and his wife, her name was Rachel, we were side near Clinton Falls, about to retire. There was a knock on the door. A, a gentleman who called himself Douglas and said he came from Kentucky. He was hunting for work. He'd like to have something to eat if they could please spare some. So Rachel made him a little bit to eat, and his husband was sitting talking to him. And it was time to leave. He refused to go. So they got in an argument and a physical altercation then ensued, in which time the, his wife, Rachel, bravely stepped in and tried to intercede. The man found something and soon started whacking Farmer James and his wife, Rachel, across the head. And then Crawford found a revolver, shot it at the man, and apparently hit him. At this point, a second stranger arrived attacked both Crawford and his wife, resulting in horrible wounds to both, leaving them apparently dead, and the two men left. And then Crawford then, after they robbed him, Crawford then regained consciousness, found that he was outside on the front porch, went back in to get his wife, Rachel. 
by the fireplace or by the hearth, dragged her out, and then, supposing she was dead, hastened to his brother-in-law's to call for help. Then they followed them in and the trail of blood. And then it looks like that that uh, both the farmer, James Crawford, and his wife, Rachel, did, in fact, survive this attack. And we know that Rachel was buried at the Little Walnut Cemetery in 1886. So I hope you enjoyed some of the founding and early history of the Clinton Falls, Alma, Groves Mill, Booneville, and Quincy area. We we'll hope you come back later to learn some more of our tiny towns and vanished villages.